In this video, let's learn about the auditory pathway. The fibers of the auditory pathway pass through the cochlear division of the vestibulocochlear nerve that is the 8th cranial nerve and it is also called as the auditory nerve. And it is also called as the auditory nerve. The major part of the auditory pathway lies in the medulla oblongata, midbrain and the thalamic region. The higher center of the auditory pathway is present in the temporal lobe of the cerebral cortex where the fibers of the auditory pathway finally terminate. And these fibers are both crossed and uncrossed so that each cochlea is represented in the cortex on the both sides. So the higher center for hearing is present in the temporal lobe of the cerebral cortex. And the fibers are both uncrossed and crossed. So the receptors for the auditory pathway are the hair cells. Those are present in the organ of the corti. The hair cells are of two types. The outer hair cell and the inner hair cell. All the hair cells are innervated by the efferent and efferent nerve fibers. And the efferent nerve fibers from the hair cells form the auditory nerve. So all the nerve fibers contain efferent and efferent nerve fibers and the efferent component forms the auditory nerve. Now let's talk about this pathway. The first order neuron of this auditory pathway are the bipolar cells of the spiral ganglion. The first order neurons of the auditory pathway are the bipolar cells of the spiral ganglion those are situated in the modulus of cochlea. So this is the spiral ganglion and these are situated in the modulus of the cochlea. The peripheral short processes or the dendroids of these bipolar cells are distributed around the hair cells of the organ of corti as the efferent nerve fibers. And their long processes, those are the axons, they leave the ear as the cochlear nerve and enter the medulla oblongata. So the dendrites of these bipolar cells are situated in the hair cells and the axons leave the ear as cochlear nerve. So this is the cochlear nerve and these are the fibers of the bipolar cells. And this cochlear nerve enters the medulla oblongata. This is the medulla oblongata. In medulla oblongata, these fibers divide into two groups. And these two groups end on the ventral cochlear nucleus and the dorsal cochlear nucleus of the same side in the medulla oblongata. This is the ventral cochlear nucleus. This is the dorsal cochlear nucleus. And the fibers end up in the ventral and the dorsal cochlear nucleus of the same side of the medulla oblongata. The efferent nerve fibers to the hair cells arises from the superior olivary nucleus. So here is the superior olivary nucleus on the both sides of medulla and fibers from these nucleus reach the hair cell by passing through the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei and the cochlear nerve of the same side. The efferent nerve fiber of the outer hair cell terminates directly onto the cell body and it controls the motility of this cell. And the efferent nerve fiber to the inner hair cell, it terminates onto the auditory or to the efferent nerve where it leaves the inner hair cell. It, and it controls the impulse output from this hair cell. Now coming to the second order neuron. The neurons of the dorsal and ventral cochlear nuclei in the medulla oblongata form the second order neurons of the auditory pathway. The axons of the second order neuron run in four different groups. So these are the neurons of the dorsal cochlear nucleus and the, and the neurons present in the ventral cochlear nucleus. Now let's learn about the axons of the second order neurons which run in four different groups. The first group of fibers cross the midline and run to the opposite side 
to form the trapezoid body and this trapezoid body goes to the superior olivary nucleus so you can see it here it crosses the midline and goes to the opposite side this is the trapezoid body and this is the superior olivary nucleus and the second group of fibers terminate at the superior olivary nucleus of the same side via the trapezoid body of the same side so this is the trapezoid body of the opposite side and this forms the trapezoid body of the same side and the third group of fibers these run on the lateral lemniscus of the same side and terminate into the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus of the same side this is the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus and here will be the lateral lemniscus of the same side and the lateral lemniscus of the opposite side this is the third group of fibers which pass through the lateral lemniscus and terminates into the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus and now let's come to the fourth group of fibers these group of fibers run into the reticular formation as the intermediate trapezoid fibers and they finally join the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus of the opposite side so these fibers run into the reticular formation and they cross the midline as the intermediate trapezoid fibers and they finally join the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus of the opposite side so this is the intermediate trapezoid body and now coming to the third order neurons the third order neurons are present in the superior olivary nucleus that means here and in the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus and these fibers or the third order neurons end up in the medial geniculate body of the thalamus and it forms the subcortical olivary center this is the medial geniculate body the fibers from the medial geniculate body go to the temporal cortex via the internal capsule as the olivary radiation so this is the olivary radiation and some fibers from the medial geniculate body go to the inferior colliculus of the tectum in the midbrain the fibers of the olivary radiation are involved in the reflex movement of the head in response to the olivary stimuli so the fibers end in the medial geniculate body and they form the subcortical olivary center and the fibers from the medial geniculate body go to the temporal cortex via the internal capsule by the olivary radiation now let's talk about the cortical olivary centers the cortical olivary centers are present in the temporal lobe of the cerebral cortex this is the olivary cortex the olivary areas are the primary olivary area and the secondary olivary area the primary olivary area includes area 41 area 42 and the vernix area and the secondary olivary center includes area 22 The secondary cortical olivary area is also called the auditor psychic area and the areas 41 and 42 are primary olivary areas those are situated in the anterior transverse gyrus and lateral surface of the superior temporal gyrus the vernix area is in the upper part of the superior temporal gyrus and it is posterior to the area 41 and 42 and the area 22 occupies the superior temporal gyrus uh, the functions of the cortical olivary centers are concerned with the perception of the olivary impulses and analysis of pitch and intensity of the sound and to determine the source of the sound area 41 and 42 are concerned only with the olivary impulses and the interpretation of the sound is carried by the vernix area and area 22 is also involved in the interpretation of the sound let's talk about the applied physiology that is the effect of the lesions the lesion of the cochlear nerve causes deafness of the ear unilateral lesion of the auditory pathway 
above the level of the cochlear nuclei causes diminished hearing. And degeneration of the hair cells of the organ of Corti leads to the presbycosis. The presbycosis is the gradual loss of hearing and it's common in the old age. The lesion in the superior auditory nucleus results in the poor localization of the sound. So guys, this is all about the auditory pathway. If you like my video, do subscribe to my channel. And do look at some of my recent videos and playlists.